seated. Thank you for worshiping the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, the Lord has blessed me this evening because I feel his presence. But also, sitting right there, this air conditioner vent's working. Yeah. <laughs> and I can feel that cool air. So I am blessed. So, and when you see me smiling up here, you know the air is on and it's hitting me really good. But the Lord has been good to us, and he has blessed us in a mighty way. And, you know, we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday because almost 2,000 years ago in an upper room. Yeah. There came a rushing mighty wind. Rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it hasn't stopped blowing since then. Come on. You know, I'm so thankful yeah. for that. I'm so thankful he touched me. He changed me. He filled me with his spirit. Yeah. I was yeah. Yeah. about four miles, maybe two miles, right over here in Dewar, Oklahoma, on Indian Hill. And I'm not supposed to be here. Because I don't have family in this. I don't have a daddy. I don't have a grandpa. I don't have an uncle. But I'm so thankful that I serve a God. That even though I didn't have anybody in this, that he reached down into Dewar, Oklahoma, on Indian Hill, and knocked on my heart. He took somebody that was an alcoholic and changed me. He brought me off a bar stool and put me on a pew. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in my life. There's nothing like the Holy Ghost. There's nothing like the, the power of God living inside of you. There's nothing like it. It cannot be imitated. You can't buy at a Walmart, you can't get it at the mall, you can only get it at an old fashioned office when you kneel down and repent of your sins. There's nothing like it. Yeah. This Holy Ghost and fire is what's keeping me alive. Yeah. And we live in a time that we need this Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Our times are they're unsettled. We don't know when we get out of church tonight what city has been right. What city's on fire? When we wake up in the morning, it'll be the same thing. What happened while we were asleep? And then you have this crazy, stupid COVID-19, which I hate. I don't like it at all. And it's changed our lives. Yes, it has. And I told our church this morning, I do not want this to be the new norm. I want the old norm back. Right. Where we can shake hands, hug each other's neck, yeah. tell somebody that you're really praying for them. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and all it is is the enemy's trying to stop revival at the end time. But it's not going to stop it. All right. We're going to have revival. His spirit's going to be poured out. The enemy will try everything he can. The, the government can try anything they can. People can try anything they can. But you can't stop the spirit of God when it begins to move. Right. They've tried it ever since Pentecost, and it hasn't worked. And I'm thankful for that. Aren't you glad you know who Jesus is? Yes. I, I wasn't raised this way. I, I knew the, about a father. I knew about a son. And I knew about the Holy Ghost. And the first time I went to an apostolic church, I walked in, and I felt something. Yeah. And I thought, they must have the air conditioner on. <laughs> and then, the very first verse I remember hearing, a little elderly lady, Maxine Vance, got behind the pulpit, behind the microphone, and said, Hear, O Israel, the yes. Lord our oh, God is one Lord. Yes. yes. And I was sitting back, about halfway back on, at the church on this side, and when she said that, my ears perked up. And the first thing I thought is, she left out the God and she left out Jesus. Or left out Jesus and left out the Holy Ghost. And in my mind, I thought, I'm going to have to help these people. <laughs> Show them, you know, what they're missing. And here I am, I'm, I'm a drunk. But I'm going to show them what's missing. And the more I opened the word of God and the more I read. Yes. All right. All I seen was hero Israel. Hero Israel. The Lord our God is one yes. Lord. Yes. And I'm so thankful for it. I was sitting in a little bitty house in Dewar, Oklahoma, in my recliner reading my Bible. And the day, all of a sudden, the words just started flashing at me. Yes. Just coming off the page. And I sat there by myself, tears running down my cheeks saying, there's one God. Yes. There's just one God. I don't yeah. ever want to get past there's just one God. That's one God died for my sins. He died for your sins. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful he filled me with the Holy Ghost and changed my life. Oklahoma, you're going to enjoy his ministry. 
And before I bring him up, I want to say one more thing. Brother Arliss, I love you. If you thought if you thought our churchyard and all the things out there looked immaculate, that's because Brother Arliss did that. And he didn't just do it for this service. He it looks this way all the time. Let's give him another hand. Brother Mantooth, we love you. Come take your liberty and preach the word of the Lord to us. Social distance. I wasn't for sure if this was a, what's it called, an hourglass? And I thought, you turn it over and it's going to tell you how long you can preach. But uh, I love your pastor and his beautiful wife. She happens to be kin to me. I'm, I've got to that age to where that I don't do, I, I can't talk without my hands. So if I'm holding the microphone, I'm liable to use it for a magic wand or about anything. <laughs> and I have been known to toss things, but uh, Brother Bauer came and laid eyes upon this beautiful lady back here, and I seen it happening, and uh, I thought, oh no. Now, Sister Bauer, how many of you have ever? She's been in the middle of a song and she just started dancing. <laughs> At home, she would be singing, and her and our praise singers, they'd be singing, and, and uh, I didn't know what was going on, but man, sometimes she'd just stop and just start shouting. Man, the whole, the, whole, you know, the whole platform, they'd be all shouting and dancing. We had a bunch of them up there. And, and uh, one day I said, what went on? She said, well, I, when I forget my words, I just shout. <laughs> So I told your secret. <laughs> but we love her and we love Brother Bauer. He stole her and and uh, and we, we have gotten by without you, but it's been tough. And nobody sings that song, The Lamb, the Lion, and the King, like you do. That's right. You've never sang it here. Oh. Well, <laughs> y'all have to get her to do that. But anyway, it was and it was reminded me when y'all was taking up an offering years ago. My dad told me that uh, a friend of his was evangelizing. And, and uh, when he was evangelizing, he went to this place and he preached. And the offering plate came around and he put $5 in. And uh, so that night after the service was over with and the pastor came up to him and said, Well, we didn't get a lot of money tonight, but he said, We do have $5. So that's our offering. It's $5. And he said, Well, I put the $5 in. And the old pastor said, well, if you'd have put more in, you'd have got more out. <laughs> I said all that to say this. What you have put into this service tonight, yes. trust me, you'll get back out. Amen. Amen. Would you stand tonight and just give the Lord a great big old hand of praise and thanks for all of his goodness, his mercy, and his power. We love you, Jesus. You're so good to us, God, every day. You've never failed us, Lord. You've been with us all the time, God. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. <laughs> worthy, O oh God. You are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy, O oh God. Praise God. If you will turn with us in the word of the Lord, tonight I promise I will be very short. After evangelizing for 10 years and pastoring now for 22 years, I've learned that Sister Johnson, a lovely lady in the church at home, uh, she she pastored because no men would come town. Quentin is about 700 folks, all right? And it's on the side of a road, the Highway 31, and most people probably never even been by there before. But uh, a lot of men didn't want to go there because it was a small church. They only had just a handful. And But Sister Johnson told me, she said, when uh, God first called me to preach, she said, Brother George, I want to tell you a good outline for a good message. She said, it's got to have a good beginning and a good ending real close together. <laughs> and God has blessed us. We, uh, we, we, we have a, we ha we're able to change our old building to a new building. And uh, we, we've been up to almost 200. And then part of our musicians left. And, 
And anyway, but uh, God has blessed us so much. And I, I, just from the outset tonight, I want to tell you something. I, I want to just be honest with you what I felt when I walked in this place. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yes. All right. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not, I, I don't say that. I feel, I, you know, they talk about Holy Ghost bumps. Well, I feel Holy Ghost bumps on Holy Ghost bumps. You keep doing what you're doing, God's going to send you people. Brother, God's going to send people to mounds. If God could put almost 200 folks in a town that has 700 folks, God can do a mighty work right here in Henrietta in Mounds, Oklahoma. Glory! Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Turn with us tonight to Romans chapter number 8, verse 28. My beautiful wife, would you, did I leave my handkerchief back there? If it wasn't for this, and this is my water, right? Yes, it is. They used to give me water, and, and uh, how many of you know Brother Carr? <laughs> Brother Carr was the first one to preach me back in 1984, 85. He was the first one to allow me to come to his church, and I thought I'd get to pay him. Had to pay him to preach. Come find it to give me a $35 check. I was so glad. <laughs> I was able to get back home. But we used to preach for him quite a bit, and I told him one night, I said, I'm a rent windmill run by water. And so they was always bringing me glass. Well, one night, Sister Carr brought me a thimble. <laughs> so... That's an hour's worth, right? <laughs> no, I preached at home this morning, so I'll try to. And I'm sorry, I, they, I'm, I apologize. I'm a nut, all right? You just have to understand. Just bear with me. We'll get there in a little bit. They told me if I ever started, if I ever quit pastor and go to Branson and open up a place up there, and I'd become a millionaire. But anyway, <laughs> Romans 8 and 28. Everybody say, and we know. And we know. That all things work together for good to them that love God. Everybody say, I know. I know. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes, for whom he did foreknow. I'm fixing to step off here where angels fear to tread. Oh, Lord, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be his. Now, don't get quiet on me, okay? Right. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might become, or he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Right. Right. Right, right. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yes, Jesus. All right. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Whom he called, them he justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. I'm going to ask Brother Bauer if he would pray tonight and ask the Lord to anoint his word. We know it's already anointed, but anoint my lips that I could minister to you tonight what God has placed upon my heart, my soul, my mind. And Brother Bauer, tonight, would you lead this awesome congregation? In, in prayer tonight and ask God to work and move. Oh God. Lord, we ask you tonight, God, to anoint Brother Man to you, Lord. Oh Let your word, God, flow through him and out of him tonight, God. Lord, we thank you for the anointed word of God tonight. God, I ask that you would anoint our ears, Lord, that not only the word would go forth, but God, that we would hear your word. God, that we would hear your word, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, that we would penetrate, God, down into the deep of our hearts. Oh, print it, God. And God, that we would take it, God, and apply it in our lives. And Lord, may we walk with you, Lord. Loose chains here tonight, God. Break chains tonight, God. Put families together tonight, God. Put dreams together in here tonight, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. Would you give him a great big old hand of praise tonight? For goodness. You're good, Lord. You're good, Lord. You're good, Lord. You're good, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated tonight in the name of the Lord. This is Pentecost Sunday. And as Brother Smith has already proclaimed to us, this is when we celebrate the 50th day. 
after Easter. And because of that, it is known as Pentecost Sunday. Years ago, they called it White or Whit Sunday. The Europeans still call it Whit Sunday, referring to White Sunday because there was 3,000 souls added to that church that day, and they all got baptized in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. And at the beginning of it, they would, they would come to church or, or they would come to the assembly and, and they would wear white clothes representing that there was something new in their life, something new had, had transpired. And so they come white. Well, i got to tell you, i got a feeling that when you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're just as white as snow. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Smith was speaking a while ago. Years ago, I was at a party, my wife and I, and I've, not, I've, I've known about this. I was raised on an apostolic pew, but stepped away from it. Never did to have the Holy Ghost. Never was baptized in Jesus' name until 1982. But it was about 1977. I was at a party in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I was sitting there, and I didn't even probably know even halfway who I was. But I was sitting there, and, and all was going on at this big, huge party, and there was a lot of people there, and, and a little girl walked by. Well, she was a young lady, actually. She walked by, and she stopped. Brother Smith, she turned around and looked at me. And she said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And I'm thinking, well, I'm doing what everybody else is doing. We get down, we party, and I mean, we smoking green leafy substance and all this other stuff. Medicinal. Medicinal, yes. We was having a time and she said, you don't belong here. She said, God has placed a call on your life. You're a preacher. What are you doing here? And I remember feeling a trembling in my body and I thought, what in the world is this young lady doing? And she just turned around and stepped on off. And there was years went by and I referred many times back to that throughout the ministry. I was in a place that was not good. I was in a place that I did not belong. And for years that bothered me. For years I felt unworthy to step behind the pulpit because as a kid I'd stepped away from truth. I didn't, I didn't ever say that God wasn't real. I prayed. You can ask my wife. I prayed and read my Bible, but I didn't live it. I didn't, I didn't, didn't want no part of it. I'd seen too much as a child. My father was a pastor for years, district uh, secretary, and also presbyter, section four for many. I've seen too much. And so therefore, I had a bad opinion of Pentecost. And so because of that, I felt unworthy. And many times after I got the Holy Ghost and God just so gloriously filled me. It was, it was wonderful. It was awesome. And, and God called me to preach. And I said, God, I can't do it because of my past. My past has been too bad. I cannot do it. I've been too mean. I've stepped away from truth. Now let me just tell you what I used to do. At home, old brother Fulsom would drive to church. Brother Fulsom had a, now this has been years ago, he had a 58 Chevy truck. And while they was at church, guess what I was doing? I was siphoning gas out of his truck. He'd go over there to Tommy Lewis's and he'd fill up. And Lord have mercy, I'd go out there and know it was so easy to get fuel out of that truck. Is all you had to do was stick a hose down in it. You didn't have to suck on it. You just stick it off over in a five-gallon bucket. Boy, it just flow out. <laughs> and the devil would remind me of that. When the offering plate, don't you kids do this. When the offering plate would come around, I didn't put in. I was a preacher's kid. I took out. Don't you guys do this. God will get you. Don't you do it. <laughs> All sorts of other things that I did and I thought I never was worthy enough. And I guarantee you one thing, you'll never be worthy enough. Right. Right. That's right. But let me just tell you the title of my message tonight. Do not let your dilemma determine your destiny. Right. All right. Right. That's good. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Don't you ever doubt that God can lift you up out of the pits of sin and somebody you may know, don't you dare let God and don't you dare let the devil tell you God cannot change that person's life. And don't you ever let the devil tell you that you have nothing and you're a nothing and you're a nobody. What you got to come to the conclusion is, is I've got a destiny. I'm a soul winner. I'm a missionary. I'm a Sunday school teacher. I refuse to allow the dilemma to destroy my destiny. You see, 
When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Do not ever, I just got to tell somebody in this place tonight, I didn't come here with any fancy words. I'm not a fancy preacher. I came to tell somebody this tonight. I don't care about your past and God don't care about your past. God is interested in your destiny and your future. That's what He's interested in. He's not interested in all of that out there. He's looking for the time that you come up and you give your heart totally freely and holy to God because God has a destiny for you. The Bible says whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. I do not believe that your life is mapped out for you. But I believe God has a will for your life. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yes. That's true. I believe God has a will for your life. And I got to tell you, the devil's going to do his dead level best to try to tell you, you ain't worth it. You ain't worthy. You ain't good enough. You can't do it. But I come to tell you tonight, I don't care what the devil says. I got a word from God. Don't let your dilemma destroy or determine your destiny because God has got a destiny for you. Whom He did for no, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image. <laughs> I got to tell you this. If Jesus did it, we can do it. Does not the Bible say that Elijah was a man of like passions as we are? Yes. Yet he prayed yes. and it didn't rain. Right. And then he prayed and then it rained. You see, God don't choose the high and mighty many times. Who was Elijah? Man, let me tell you a little bit about Elijah. Elijah was an awesome prophet. Can you imagine taking a mantle and striking the waters. Some of you, we always shout about God rolling the Red Sea back. He didn't just do it once. Jordan rolled back also when the priests, their, their feet touched it. There's another time, oh Elijah, just walking along and here was a creek and he touched it, he smote it and what happened? Boom! Elijah was an awesome individual. But he had problems. Elijah one day took the the prophets of Baal, Baal, whatever you want to call them. And he said, we're going to find out who's God and who's not God. And so they all went up on the mountain. And man, the prophets of Baal, they, they cut themselves. They done everything under the sun. Cut themselves and screaming and hollering. Oh, Baal, Baal, Baal. Come down with the fire. Didn't happen. And oh, Elijah, one prophet, he got over there. He said, well... He said, fill up the water, and they filled up, they filled the trenches with water and all the stuff around about. And, and the next thing you know, Elijah prayed a simple prayer. Right. You see, God loves simple things. Right. Yeah. Yes, he does. You know, God is so cool. Yes. <laughs> he walked up one day and there was a man. God don't do things just the way we expect him to do. Yeah. Right. That's right. He walks up to a blind man. <laughs> He looks on the ground, picks up a little bit of dust. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to have your glasses or cool glasses. <laughs> Spit in his hand. Yeah. That's the Bible. Yeah. And then he rubbed it in his eyes. Right. And he said, Go wash. In the pool of Siloam. A blind man? Did you realize how far it was from when Jesus told him that to where the pool was? Now, Brother Caleb Oxford, he's here, he'd tell me. It's about two miles. That boy, he, he can quote more scripture. He's not even supposed to be alive, but he can quote more scripture. I think I've got a tag. I'll let you have that. I can just throw it. And he takes that. Dobbs his eyes with it. And he tells him, go wash. I can imagine, Sister Bauer, from the time that that blind man left where Jesus anointed his eyes, right. the time he got to the pool of Siloam, where are you going? 
I'm going to go wash. What? I'm going to go wash. What are you doing that for? Because somebody told me. Right. I got to go wash. Yeah. But you're a blind man. You're always going to be blind. It's impossible for you to be anything else. But he went and he washed. He had a destiny. Right. He had a healing. Right. Yes. Amen. He had a revival. Yes. Right. And the Bible says, Brother Smith, when he got there, he washed. And when he washed, his eyes, he could see. Yeah. And the Bible records it. I don't know what happened to the blind man, but I got to tell somebody in this place tonight, you may have spit and nothing but spit in your eye. But hang on, if you keep on living for God, if you keep on, I got to tell you, God is going to use you, and God is going to change you, and God is going to let you be a witness, and God is going to let you be a testimony, because God has got a calling, and God has a destiny for you. Yes, He does. Hallelujah. I don't care where you come from, and God don't care where you come from. Elijah, he goes up there, I left Elijah, here we are back, I left, I left Jesus on the cross. <laughs> Elijah, all this happens. And so then the Bible says that Elijah prayed a simple little prayer. And the Bible says, and the fire fell. Yes. That's right. Amen. And that will preach you. Mm -hmm. And the fire fell. And Elijah runs over to Ahab and he said, Hey, Ahab, you better get ready. It's fixing to rain. And it rained. And it poured. And then Elijah said, Oh, by the way, I want you to kill all those prophets. And they killed every single one of them. Yeah. And Elijah runs down to the bottom and then Jezebel gets word. And Jezebel said, I'm going to kill Elijah. Elijah run into a dilemma. Yes. Pastor, for 22 years, let me tell you, I can tell you a whole lot about dilemmas. But God spoke to me one day and said, hey, look, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes. You just keep preaching the word. You keep taking care of the church. Oh, yes, you keep feeding my flock and you watch what's going to happen. And I got to tell you, oh, Elijah run into the same problem. He knew that Jezebel was going to have him killed. Yes. And so what does Elijah do? He ends up in a cave. Man, all this stuff goes by lightning and thunder and, and God wasn't in any of that but the still small voice come and said, Elijah. That's right, amen. And while he was there, God spoke to him. And God said, Elijah, get up off your face. You had one dilemma, but I gotta tell you, I got seven thousand that has not bowed the knee. Oh, Elijah said, I'm the only one. Right, right, that's right. Here I am, only the only. I come to tell you tonight, I don't care how many dilemmas you've been through. Yeah. I don't care what has come your way. Don't you dare throw in the towel yet because yeah. it's just a seven count. Dig right. up and say, God, if God is for me, who can be against me? As long as I have God on my side, I will not allow my dilemma to determine my destiny. The destiny of the church is to be glorious and powerful. Oh, somebody stand and give the Lord a great big old hand of praise. Do not allow your dilemma to determine your destiny. God bless you. you may be seated just for a short period of time longer. I promise I will shut up here in a short. You see, dilemmas happen. You can't get out of it. Dilemmas are going to transpire. It's just, it's just a fact of nature. It's just a fact that's going to happen. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it, but here a while back, I was driving down the road and somebody pulled up in front of me. And I'm not going to tell you what it said because I don't agree with that kind of language, but it said stuff <laughs> happens. Well. That's true. And stuff happens. And you got no control over it. But what you can control is how you react to it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. What are you going to do 
When the enemy comes in like a flood, I got to tell you, you just keep on living for God. You just keep on doing the right thing. Young people just keep on doing what's right and saying, God, I may be going through hell right now, but I know there's a destiny for me. There's a plan. There's a will. There's a way. And as long as I stay where I need to be staying, everything's going to be all right. Amen. You see, the destiny of the church, the Bible says the gates of hell cannot stop the church. Right. I'm glad to be a part of a church tonight that is Amen. unstoppable no matter what happens. Yes. Amen. Amen. Huh. Dilemmas. You know, sometimes God gives us dreams and God gives us things that he shows us. And the Bible says that Joseph had a dream. And he dreamed this awesome dream. And he told his brothers and they got jealous. Yeah. And so after, you know, make a long story short, they took him and throwed him in a pit. And Joseph had a dream. He had a, he had a destiny. He had a calling. And you can imagine Joseph, here he is in a pit. And he went from a pit to another place called Potiphar's house. Well, he went from the pit to a prison. And in prison, there was a guy there by the name of Potiphar, and he realized, hey, man, this, you know, we drag him out, and they drug him out. Everything looked good. And then what happens? Joseph's right back into prison again. But Joseph had a call. Joseph had a dream. And the Bible says that Joseph went from the pit to prison to Potiphar's house to prison again. But i got to tell you something. Joseph continued to live for God. Yeah. 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 Until he was the second in command in Egypt. I come to tell you tonight. Don't you let your dilemma right. determine your destiny. I'm speaking to some people tonight that I'm not, I don't, I, God didn't tell me. It's none of my business. But there's been some dilemmas in some of your lives. And the enemy would like for you to say, oh, why don't you just give up? The Bible says in Philippians chapter number one and verse number six, though, he said this. Being confident. Everybody say confident. Confident. Of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you right. will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I remember years ago, a young man, he was, he was kind of a bully. I guess you'd just say he's a bully. And he was always bullying somebody. And this, this young man that trying to help somebody else and this bully got a hold of him and he said buddy I'm coming over to your place tomorrow and I'm going to work you over and the young man he was frightened I mean he's like hey you know what did I do and the guy said you're one of those Christians aren't you yeah I, I know you're kind I know you're kind you're a, you, you, you're nothing but just I, I forget what he called him he called him a a sissy or something. And he said, you're a sissy? And he said, I know you won't fight because you're one of those Christians. You're one of those Christians. And so the young man, I don't approve of this. It is a good story, though. <laughs> the young man, he decided, you know what? I've had enough. I've had enough. That's it. I've had enough. So he met the bully one day after school and and the bully told him, he said, guess what? He said, today's the day I'm going to work you over. And the young man, he said, well, he said, I've been praying. And he said, I've decided that me and Jesus might have just a little separation for a short period of time. <laughs> and he said, you may whip me. But he said, my daddy told me that a time and chain with, is this all right? <laughs> a time and chain with electrical tape wrapped around it will do a lot of damage to your head. <laughs> he pulled that chain out, and that time and chain, how many of you know what a time and chain is? You know, a little bit chain about that long. Maybe some of y'all don't because you're too, too young, but anyway. <laughs> and he proceeded to smote him hip and thigh. <laughs> And after it was over with, the young the, the bully said, 
Well, what about your Jesus? He said, well, he said, I thought we separated for a short period of time. But he said, God never left me. And he said, well, where was he at? And he said, he was right here in my right hand all the time. <laughs> and he went to church the next time. And he said he felt bad because he had put this old boy with the, with the chain, time and chain. And he said, I, I felt bad, he said, because I really done him bodily harm. He never picked on him after that. But he said, I got in church service and he said, he said, I felt so bad in church. He said, there was just a lot of conviction on me. He said, I didn't really know what to do. And he said, the preacher got up behind the pulpit and the preacher said, God said, I know what you did. I was watching. But don't feel bad. Because I've got a calling on your life. Jesus. And he said, I felt like I failed. But he said, the end result was this. God taught me a lesson. God told him, he said, many times the devil's going to come against you like a bully. Yeah, that's right. But he said, he that began a good work in you is going to finish it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good. Amen. Amen. Right. I come to tell somebody tonight in this place, don't give up. Let God feel you, thrill you. And don't you ever, ever let your past and your dilemma determine your destiny. You see, if God made you a promise, God keeps his promises. Yes, he does. That's right. Amen. As I said before, I can't brag to you about how good I was. I can tell you how bad I was. But I'm grateful to tell you tonight that God put it all under the blood. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. Brother Carr told Brother Bauer. Did you know Brother Mantu's got some warrants out on him in McCurtain County, Oklahoma? <laughs> I said, well, probably warrants out on me a lot of counties. But I said in 1982, the guy that they had the warrants out on died at an altar one night. They took him out to Lakeview, Florida. And they buried him in the name of Jesus Christ. And I said, I rose up a new creature in Christ Jesus so they can look all they want to. The old man is dead. I've got a destiny. And the destiny is streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. And that's where you belong is the destiny of heaven. Would you stand and give him praise tonight? Oh! Almighty is our God. You are a rock, Lord. You are a shield and you're a buckler. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how pastor, these two pastors tonight want to do this, but i got to ask you a question tonight. Does anybody want to be brave enough to step out from where you're at and say, I will be everything God wants me to be? And I will not allow my dilemma right now to determine my destiny. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, i got to tell you, God's got it. That's right. Amen. Amen. You need deliverance, guess what? God's got it. That's good. Amen. I can tell you stories of Job. And the Bible says that God told Satan, he said, you... You've made me destroy Job without a cause. Sometimes things happen in life that's not your fault, but it brings you down. That's true. That is true. It's, there's, no, there's no rhyme, there's no reason, there's no cause. It's just the enemy's trying to destroy you. But tonight, do not let your dilemma determine your destiny. Amen. Amen. Brother Bauer.